welcome back to surgical utopia today we will be discussing about the blood so this over here you see is a cross section of a blood vessel and we will first see the layers of a blood vessel this is artery and we will see the layer of the artery from outside to inside so this over here is the outermost layer it is tunica externa so this is tunica externa and it forms the outermost layer of the artery wall it possesses a network of small vessels vasa vasorum and it provides the blood vessel with molecules and nutrients for cellular activity then it also contains a network of autonomic nerve fibers which is called as nervi vasorum and this is responsible for vasodilation and vasoconstriction of this layer so this is the outermost layer and it serves for the blood vessels to be in place in the body tissue by anchoring it at a particular place it also has a protective function of restricting sudden expansion of the artery and thereby preventing any damage to the artery the second layer over here that we see is the tunica media so this layer over here is the middle layer and it comprises of the smooth muscles this is the largest layer amongst the three layers of the artery as you can appreciate the upper outer layer and the lower inner layer both are thinner in comparison to the middle layer it is formed by smooth vessels and it plays role in vasoconstriction and vasodilation it also provides mechanical strength to the wall of the artery as it has the collagen fibers in it the smooth muscles they will contract and increase or decrease the diameter of the arterial lumen thereby causing vasoconstriction or vasodilation the next we have the innermost layer and this is called as the tunica intima so this is the narrowest layer of the three and it is formed by the endothelium basement membrane lamina propria and internal elastic membrane so this acts as a barrier between the blood in the lumen and the vessel wall this layer will release endothelins from the endothelium cells and this local chemical can cause constriction of the smooth vessels within the walls of the vessels thereby regulating the blood pressure another function of this layer is that it prevents the attachment of the blood to the blood vessel wall and thereby it prevents the formation of thrombus so these were the three layers structure we'll see is that you can appreciate over here this translucent structure this is the plasma of the blood so you can see that the plasma is actually straw yellow in color it constitutes about 55% of blood volume and 99% of the blood plasma is constituted by water whereas only 10% is formed by the molecules such as the salts respiratory gases hormones and proteins that is plasma proteins it also contains ions such as sodium potassium calcium chloride ion magnesium ions the function of this plasma is that it suspends the formed elements that is leukocytes erythrocytes and platelets in itself and it also acts as a buffer between the cell and the external environment the components of this plasma are responsible for functions such as osmoregulation transportation of molecules and immune defense ions that is sodium and potassium are responsible for the buffer activity and a ph of 7.4 is maintained a number of plasma proteins are also present over here this one is the albumin and its role is to prevent water from diffusing outside the blood stream into the extracellular matrix
the second one is fibrinogen and this makes the largest amount of the protein in the plasma this fibrinogen is responsible for blood clotting the third protein is the globulins the fourth protein is the prothrombin which is the precursor of thrombin factor which is responsible for converting fibrinogen into fibrin that ultimately forms the blood clot the next protein contained in plasma is transferrin and it is an iron transporting protein that binds iron and carries it throughout the body now we will remove the plasma from the lumen of the artery and we will be left with only the blood cells so these are the blood cells that you see the largest number of blood cells that are present are these red cells and these are the red blood cells or the erythrocytes so here you see that these erythrocytes are small biconcave and discoid in structure and the thickness on in the center of this cell is around 0.8 micrometer whereas at the edge that is the outer ring its thickness is around 2.6 micrometer so it is thicker at the edge and thinner in the center and their function is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the cells and remove carbon dioxide from cells and transport it back to the lungs so here you see a closer picture and this is the center over here and this is the edge which is thicker as compared to the center thus giving it the shape of a biconcave structure the next we come to the leukocytes and this is also called as white blood cells and there are different components in white blood cells the first one we will see is that you see in purple color is the neutrophil and we will have a closer look of this as you can see these neutrophils account for around 60% of the total number of leukocyte in the blood stream and it has a multi lobe nucleus so over here in this picture you can see that this is bilobed whereas if you see another structure another neutrophil over here it is having three lobes over here this is the first lobe this is second and this is the third lobe apart from this multi lobed nucleus you can also appreciate small tiny particles in the cytoplasm and these are the granules and hence neutrophils are also granulocyte the function of neutrophil is that it provides the first line of defense second component that you see over here these are the lymphocytes and on a closer look that you see these constitute for around 30 to 40% of the total leukocytes there are different types of lymphocytes the t lymphocytes b lymphocytes and the natural killers nucleus and it occupies the most of the area or the volume of the cell with less amount of cytoplasm at the periphery these lymphocytes are responsible for fighting infectious agents by recognizing the antigens proteins or glycoproteins located in the plasma membrane of a foreign cell and thereby starting a immune response against them the next that you see over here these are the eosinophils and on a closer look we will see that eosinophils are also having granules in the cytoplasm with a bilobed nucleus these eosinophil will constitute for around 1 to 4% of total leukocytes the function of leukocytes is that it provides defense against the helminthic parasites by phagocytosis and releasing digestive enzymes these digestive enzymes will destroy the parasites then over here if you see the larger cells this is the monocyte and monocytes are the largest amongst the leukocytes that is evident by their size or their structure and the monocytes are having clear cytoplasm with no granulocytes 
with a single kidney shaped nucleus this nucleus is kidney shaped and the size of monocytes will vary from 14 to 24 micron meter which is larger than the lymphocytes also and it accounts for around 4 to 8 percent of the total amount of leukocyte the function of this monocyte is that when it transforms into macrophages after coming out from the blood vessels into the tissue, it acts as an antigen presenting cells and it presents the antigen by binding to it to the T lymphocytes, where the T lymphocytes will recognize it and then eliminate it. Now, if you see the, this structure over here, these are the basophils. Having a closer look, you can see that the basophils are also having a little tiny particles in the cytoplasm. These are called as the granules and it will also have one S-shaped or U-shaped nucleus which is shifted to one side of the cytoplasm. The basophil will constitute to around only 0.5% of the total leukocytes and their diameter is around 10 to 14 micrometer. Fils are mediators of allergic and inflammatory response and histamines released by basophils is a vasodilator that increases the blood flow and decreases the blood pressure. The granules that you see over here, they will release histamines, will mediate inflammation during the allergic response. So the basophils will secrete histamines from these granules, whereas the eosinophil over here will release histaminase from these granules and it will end an allergic reaction by degrading the histamines and releasing chemicals that neutralize the inflammatory mediators. So these are the cells that are present in the blood this is the plasma that you see over here this straw color and then it contains the blood cells that you can see contained in the plasma then the three layers of the blood vessels or the artery the outermost the tunica external the middle one tunica media and the inner one tunica intima this is the plasma over here and it contains different cells so it was all about the blood, the wall of the artery and its cross section. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for now and until we meet next, bye bye till then.